Welcome back. I am your host. I am attorney Stephen Leahy, and this is the IRS Radio Hour on AM 560. The, the answer. answer. And I, I am your co-host. You are my Jim co-host. Leahy. Do, should I call you Jimmy or Jim? I always called you Jimmy. Uh, you know, my cousins, when I was a kid, they always called me Stevie. They still call me Stevie. They're the only ones in the world that call me Stevie, but my cousins still call me Stevie. And I, had I, always one guy call, I had one guy call me Kevin, and I was like, Kevin. Okay. I can't stop. Well, don't him, call man. me late for dinner. Anyway, what are we doing now, Jim? You took my spiel. It is the blag, the blag. That's it's right. a wonderful segment where Attorney Leahy sits down, starts a fire, <laughs> and gets arrested. Fire, so. <laughs> okay, but anyway, uh, I, you know, only this, you could prevent forest fire. <laughs> yeah, you know, it used to be Smokey Smokey the Bear when I was growing up. Now he's just smoke. Smoke. Now he's just Smokey Bear. You know, they, 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 they cut out his middle name, the He's just smoking too bear. much. Too anyway, much. Uh, we anyway, don't need three syllables. One this is two. What the blog segment this week, I get to talk about two of my favorite areas, and Jimmy will be, just be enamored with it, both areas. One is foreclosures. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. <laughs> foreclosures <laughs> sh- and short sales. You know, I guess they kind of go hand in hand. Ooh. And IRS implications. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, pull up. <laughs> take, <laughs> take notes. It is true. So, uh, you know, this, but this gets important. I think, you know, I had a commercial on my, uh, you know, that was running that said, you know, people, I had a client who was in foreclosure and then so had one, uh, lost another property, a short sale, and that there were tax implications for this. And it's, now there are, uh, it really depends on how you hold the property, if you hold it as a primary residence or if you hold it as a investment property. But, uh, you know, the Congress, who was very slow to move, in 2007, they, they introduced this, uh, the Mortgage for mortgage Forgiveness Debt Relief Act oh, of wow. 2007. Yeah, they, they of 2007? Up, they come up with these great names. Okay, and that's, well, remember, we were in the middle of the crisis then, and a lot of people were losing their I homes. I thought we are in a crisis now. Well, we, <laughs> I have to when agree. are we not in a crisis? I have to agree with you, but the crisis was big then for the foreclosures. Everybody was losing their house. The numbers were huge. Um, I did a lot of foreclosure work back then, um, and what was happening was there's this debt relief in that if you if you uh, if the mortgage company cancels debt, so if I lose my home in foreclosure and there's uh, and I owed them two hundred thousand and they sell it for a hundred thousand, well I still owe them a hundred thousand dollars. Whoa! And if the mortgage company doesn't sue me to get it, they they cancel that debt, and that and then the IRS can. They get a 1099, and they can tax me on that okay, hundred thousand okay. dollars. Let's speak English here. So, okay. what does that mean for just regular people? Well, it means that that you have to. They think that that's like income. So, if I made a hundred thousand dollars in income, I have to pay taxes on it. If the mortgage company forgives a hundred thousand dollars in debt, I don't get that hundred thousand dollars. But the IRS still wants to tax me like I did. Okay, so that's oh my gosh, yeah, that's a lot of money, right? So in 2007, they came up with the home. This how do you not just jump off a cliff? Well, because here's there's there's ways around it. That's why you don't jump off. Explain a cliff. to me. That's why you call an expert who understands this stuff before you start jumping off a cliff. And I do get people who call. And I just talked to a client of mine yesterday. He just got a, a 1099 because here we are in January. People are getting a 1099. He lost his home to foreclosure, and he got a, a bill for thirty five thousand dollars. Right? Whoa. Yeah. And uh, and he said, "Well, I, I said, are you going to get a um, a tax refund back?" We were at the 341 meeting, which is for bankruptcy. And he said, no, no, I'm not going to. I just got this. I got to have to pay taxes on this. And I had to tell him, you don't have to pay taxes on that. In uh, in the this debt relief act of 2007, it expired. But then every year, <laughs> this is great because every year it would expire at the end of the year. And then Congress would not renew it until December of the following year for that year. So you couldn't do any planning. Nobody knew if the Congress was going to uh, extend it or not. But Congress did extend it on December 8th, 17th this year. Right at the end of the year, they said, well, let's extend it again. Uh, and so that means if you sold your home in 2015 for less than you owed on your mortgage, again, a short sale, or you lost your home to foreclosure, they extended this mortgage, uh, the Mortgage Forgiveness Debt Relief Act. And what that does is allows you not to pay taxes on that money. Like in that example I gave you was $100,000. Well, 
Well, if I had to pay, if I if I have to pay even ten percent on a hundred thousand dollars, is is a ten thousand bucks? It's a lot of money. It's a, it's a lot of smack. So this, if it's my primary residence, this debt relief act allows me to accept it and take it off of my taxes. Now, this is what people do wrong. They get the 1099 that says, oh, like this gentleman I talked about yesterday, he got the $35,000 1099. He said, and I said, don't worry, you don't have to pay taxes. And he said, does that mean I just ignore it? I said, no, you don't ignore it. You have to acknowledge it because what will happen if you ignore it, even though you you have to acknowledge it. And then so you put it on your tax form and then you take it off your tax form. It's called an exception. So then you could take it off your tax form and not pay taxes on it. So that's important. But you have to acknowledge Is there an it. exception for the exception. <laughs> there are exceptions to the exception, and that's if it's not a primary residence, if it's if it's an investment property. Oh, so I remember <laughs> a, ca- a Senate candidate having that issue. What's that? Primary uh, residence. Oh, he, oh, that wasn't a Senate candidate. That no, was, he was a Senate candidate. Oh, what about uh, Mayor Rahm Emanuel? He had, the, oh, he had that problem, too. Is that your primary residence? My. Oh, I don't live in Chicago anymore. Oh. But so this comes up whether it's your but but again in this case um, you have to put it on your tax return and then take it off your tax return. So and so I told him, oh, you, you know, he's. I asked him, do you usually do your own taxes? He said, yeah, I usually. I said, you know what? This year, call me. We're going to do your taxes this year. Call me, maybe because you have. Hey, I just if, met if you. this isn't treated right, you're going to pay taxes on this thirty five thousand dollars, and it's going to hurt. So you got to treat it correctly, and in some of these big box outfits out there, they don't treat it correctly. They they uh, don't uh, they don't see it very often. They don't know how to handle it, and if they don't know how to handle it, you're going to wind up paying taxes on it, and that's it could be a, a lot of money. Like I said I've had clients who came to me; they owe over hundred. They get assessed taxes for over a hundred thousand dollars, and it turns out they don't own a dime. You know, and this is we're fighting with the IRS for one client right now for just this issue. The IRS came back and said, oh, uh, she owns a home. You can't read. They this. really speak like but, that. Yes. And but this wasn't about um, this was about investments property because there's another exception. Well, I'm talking about this primary residence mortgage forgiveness act. But there's another exception. And that's if you're technically insolvent. OK, so that's it. Go ahead, Jim. Tell me, what does that mean? <laughs> Did that just sound just I like you? Insol- that sounds just I know like what insolvent means. Insolvent? Okay. Insolvent. Technically insolvent, right? I have more liabilities than assets. I know what solvent means. I took, <laughs> I took chemistry, okay? I thought uh, technically insolvent means I don't know how to use technology. <laughs> I thought it means that it's like oil and water. Okay. What is a computer for? <laughs> I am a robot. <laughs> so I am going to tell you now what total. Oh, oh, so I'm going to I'm tell sorry. you now what what technically insolvent means. Again, that means your liabilities are greater than your assets. So this person that so we're basic f- accounting. Yes. So which this, I failed. This person. <laughs> Even basic accounting, uh, and most people do. It's, it's true. Again, most it's people, true. It's awful. Most people have no I'm sorry. idea. I'm sorry, no, I didn't no, mean to cut no, you off. No, that's fine. Because most people are just like you. They have no idea what that means, and so when they're faced with this problem, they don't know how to. They don't know how to solve it. They have no idea, and they can go online, and you can read all you want, and they still won't know how to solve the problem. Hey, we just met you. And these taxes are crazy. So here's his number. He's Stevie Leahy. What's the number? Stevie. Can we do? And, and, You're not uh, my cousin. If there's a problem, yo, he'll solve it. <laughs> Call Stephen Leahy <laughs> while the DJ revolves it. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're high fiving through the glass right now. Whoa. Nobody knows there's glass. What number can we do to call you? you can call how me, can we contact it's you? It's 312-664-6649. And, and you can go to my website, which is Chicago Tax Team. Dot com. Okay. Uh, you know, and there's lots of information on the website about this kind of stuff. Is there a way that we can get information on this blog or can and I? This is where my, this is where my kids uh, always say, 1099A or C from a big box outfit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I talk about big box outfits a lot. Why? Because they don't care about you too much. They 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 worry about it's numbers. True. It's you true. know, they're doing numbers, numbers, numbers. If Cutthroat. you're different, if your situation's different than most everybody else, you know, they're not going to they, they don't take the they don't come up for air and look at your situation. They don't care about you as and that's why here people at open tax resolutions. We really care about you. We want to help you. And so if you need your tax returns done, if you have one of these problems, you get a 1099A or C in the mail. 
then you need to call us at 312-664-6649. Did you sell your house at a short sale this last year? Call me, 312-664-6649. Do you want to sell your your house short sale this year? Call me, 312-664-6649. No, please, give me the number one more time. 312-664-6649. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned, because after the commercial break, we'll be right back. 